Hello everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Vegeta was born with destroyer key. Before I start I'd like to mention that I created a discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I mainly post Osa stuff. Now back to the video. In the last part we discussed Beerus' trip to Earth and the fight with Vegeta and him. Vegeta put everything into his attacks and managed to kill Beerus, becoming the new god of destruction. Once he was elected properly and linked to Shin after the battle, he chose his home planet, which he set in Earth's orbit. Now being a full-fledged destroyer with Whis at his side and Goku as his partner. With the recap out of the way, let's continue the what if. Now that Vegeta became a god of destruction, he must care about something more than his family and selfish desires. Being stuck in a Super Saiyan Blue 3 power level base, he has practically begun to surpass Whis himself in full power. However, his power is nothing without the good old technique of self-movement, which Goku is beginning to train for back on Earth. We said that in order for Vegeta to access that state, he must do it on his own, because just teaching him is out of the question since everyone's mindset differs from one person to another. So Vegeta can't be helped much, instead all he asks is whether Beerus taught himself that technique and what trick did he use. Whis replied that Beerus accessed it through the rage by the loss of his favorite race and he didn't get the chance to get another substitute family like Vegeta himself did on Earth. Vegeta then starts with the rage training, but realizes that Whis said that everyone differs in mind one way or the other, so he began finding himself in all that. On Earth, Goku has began his venture of stacking Kaioken on his forms. He can hold on the regular blue form and the multiplier quite perfectly. However, going into blue 2 and newly discovered 3 proves to be a challenge, so he keeps honing his skills. He comes to train his stacking on Vegeta's world and is making excellent progress. Even Vegeta is impressed by how much Goku has achieved and looks forward to having him as a bodyguard. Well, according to Daishinkan's word at least. But, while the two are having a blast, in space, the now defunct Frieza Force decided that this is enough shame and that they have to revive Frieza at any cost, having been defeated by a mere child and a hero's father. They've heard from many sources that a deity has settled on a newly formed planetoid in Earth's atmosphere, going parallel to their moon and so the Earth's Dragon Balls are out of the question. However, they remember Namekians having the same set, so they set course to Namek, where they revive Frieza in a snap. Frieza then swears he has to defeat the little shit that killed him and began picking a training partner. He started looking for Saiyans right from the start, but after searching he couldn't find anyone. As a flashback, his father killed the rest of the race, including Broly, which led to his destruction. So he settles for the forces strongest warrior as the two began training. Vegeta knew that Frieza is alive but chose not to react just yet as he wanted to fight the bitch who made his race extinct at his fullest power to prove the point. And best of all, he has an ace up the sleeve of his. After about 6 months since Frieza's arrival, Champa came to give gratitude towards the new destroyer. Vegeta knew that was family of Beerus' from the start, so he apologized straight away. However, Champa said as much as he was Beerus' brother, he hated him equally as much, so it was kinda alright. Champa came over to host a friendly tournament between the two of the strongest fighters in their universe. Vegeta can't use a challenge from a friend of his, so he accepts without second thought. His fighter is Goku naturally, so he tells him a place and a time. Goku agrees, wanting to take on a challenge big enough from ages ever since Vegeta came around. The tournament date arrives and Goku cannot wait, so him, Vegeta and Whis go to Universe 6. Arriving there, they see Champa stuffing his ass with food and Vegeta, getting a natural Saiyan hunger rush, goes and joins him, 
which pleases Champa, seeing that Vegito actually likes to eat just as much as he does, although at a much higher scale than him. Goku also goes to eat, but is stopped by Hit, a famous assassin and a martial artist. He was asked whether he will fight or not, and Goku, being happy as hell, accepts the challenge. Hit just turns around and tells Goku that it's his loss just by coming here. Goku gets confused but still goes along. The fighting area is said to be a canyon-like formation of mountains on an unknown planet of theirs. Vegeta, Champa and their accompanying angels sit down as the battle starts. Goku attacks Hit with normal Super Saiyan but it barely makes the dent. Hit then uses his time skip ability to counterattack and land a very powerful punch to Goku's liver, making Goku fall down like a swatted fly. Goku manages to get up, still partly disabled from the liver punch, but goes straight to blue at this point and attacks Hit, but Hit still keeps up. However, he doesn't throw hard punches to Goku since Goku's blue form increased his endurance in battle. Goku uses his brain for once and decides to observe Hit's movements to predict them, fighting as a martial artist this time. Hit notices that Goku isn't just all talk and puts effort into his attacks, to which Goku counters with extreme precision, even for Hit. Hit figured that Goku is predicting his movements, so he tries a trick of his own, as he began powering up. Goku looked on as Hit powered up, but his ki isn't rising whatsoever. Once Hit was done, he went and tested his theory out on Goku, which worked flawlessly and Goku fell down and out of his Super Saiyan Blue. Vegeta was curious as to what just happened while Whis explained that Hit managed to increase the duration of his time skip. Goku was definitely gassed out but nowhere finished. Getting up, Goku went to Super Saiyan Blue and then into Super Saiyan Blue 2 right then and there. Hit was surprised that Goku had more up his sleeve so he kept the battle going. Even though Goku had an increase in speed and strength, Hit caught up with him and started pummeling him back into the dirt. At this point, Goku had only one trick up his sleeve and that was combining Kaioken on top of Blue 2. Because the Super Saiyan Blue 3 couldn't hold it for longer than a minute, so he went for it. As he powered up to his fullest power, Hit observed Goku in utter confusion and actually gained respect for how powerful his opponent is starting to improve his time skip himself. As Goku was done, he asked Hit for one last chance before he has to win the battle. Hit just attacked, but before Hit could activate his time skip, Goku activated Kaioken, which managed to break through the Hit and damage him. Goku then began powering up further into time ten Kaioken as Hit looked at him like a deer in damn headlights and stood there. Goku then finished and decided to knock out Hit which he does very easily. With a battle won, Champa congratulates Vegeta and Goku on the win. He also says how they have Saiyans in Universe 6, in fact, a whole infestation. Vegeta is actually curious as to what these Saiyans are like, so he arranges a meeting with Champa to go to planet Sadala. The day arrives, Vegeta, Goku and Champa go meet the Saiyans of Universe 6, and so they go. Upon getting there, Vegeta looks on to how Sadala looked like before the Civil War happened and the planet was reduced to ash. Kaba greeted Vegeta and the rest with a warm welcome, weirding Vegeta out as to why in the hell didn't they flip out. Kaba meets Vegeta and sees that a Saiyan indeed managed to become a destroyer and asks how did Vegeta do it. Vegeta got interested in a young Saiyan and went with him. Well, Goku just went to take a look around to see how the Saiyan culture worked. Goku then met a set of gangsters roaming around. He then went to greet them, but they weren't so cooperative. Goku then decided to roll with it to see the bad side of their ensemble. When he arrived, he met Cauliflower, the head of the gang. Goku went to greet her, but the bodyguards went offensive and attacked Goku. Goku just pinky poked them to the ground. Kalifla was actually surprised that someone stronger than Kaba exists and goes to greet him. Kale is behind her, nervous and scared. Goku introduces himself as Kakarot, that being his Saiyan name, and asks about the Saiyans here. Kalifla, act Kalifla calls Kale over as she comes over. Kalifla and Kale then explain how they're all about peace here and how they actually save planets for a living. 
Meanwhile, Vegeta went to greet the king of planet Sadala called Letos. Vegeta became very good friends with him the second they met. With that, Vegeta and Goku are spending time there and are getting plenty of friends and acquaintances left and right. However, they have completely forgot about Frieza and have gained some consciousness around that part. But the call from Whis wasn't about Frieza, but about two young men, one with blue hair and one with black, spiky hair. And with that, we're leaving things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you like the repair, then click dislike. But if you like the video, hit the like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out.